There is no better way to wake up in the morning than with a smile on your face, while a good night's sleep and sweet dreams are always the case. The one thing you can always count on is creating your own happiness. If you are feeling down, need some meditation, or simply like to start your day on a high note, you are tuning to the right station with the right program and the right host. Good morning. It's Wave 96.3 FM with Lady Patty P inside Rise with Waves. I'll put your mind at ease, provide words of encouragement, and help you to get started on a productive day. It's time to worship. Get up. Let's sing praises unto the Lord.
the pillow. But all you got to do is just see, just see, see Jesus. Jesus. If you do that, he'll bring.
your love is kind. Your love is patient. You fill my heart with so much peace and joy. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. Jesus, you love me too much. Oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Your love is kind. Your love is patient.
check, one, two, check, check, one, two. Check, one, two. Check, one, two. Check, one, two, one, two. One, two, check, one, two, mic check, one, two, one, two, mic check, one, two, check, one, two, check, one, two, mic check, one, two, one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one two. Check one two. Mike check one two one two. Check one two one two. Mike check one two. Check one two one two one two. Mike check one two. Check one two. Check one two one two one two Check again if it turned on again.
Good morning to you all. We are about to start this morning. But just before we begin, let me take the opportunity to remind you of some of the protocols that will govern our gathering here this morning. Under the Health Protection Act, all persons must be wearing a mask that is properly fitted and it is to be worn at all times. We will adhere to the social distancing protocol as well, guidelines of six feet. And so you would have been guided by the ushers that you sit where the X is on the bench. You sit on the X because that is where the measurement will begin from. Under the guidance of the health ministry, they say that 50 persons are to be gathered, but based on the size of the, or the area of the space to be considered, if there is the allowance for that, then more than 50 can gather. Right now we are above 50, but we do have some spaces so we are still under that guideline. May we all stand. Additionally, I'm gonna ask that you either turn off your phones or you place it on vibrate, silent mode so that we will not be disturbed throughout the service. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that cometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. We this morning are gathered together to celebrate the life of Mr. Fitz, Fitz Albert Anderson. And we know that it is not an easy thing to lose a loved one. And so this morning, on behalf of the pastor and the other leaders of this church, we offer our condolences unto the family 
and friends of Mr. Fitz Albert Anderson. This morning, as we are gathered together, let us understand that even though we sorrow, we know that the Lord Jesus can give the comfort and only he knows the real pain that you may feel, but he is able to comfort you accordingly. Let us pray. Father, we, we thank you that we can be gathered together in this house of God. And as we come, we come to celebrate the life of Fitz Albert Anderson. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the life that he lived. And he lived a good life, a rich life, a long life. And so, Lord Jesus, even as we come to remember him now, that, O oh Lord Jesus, that the memories will be sweet, and that, above all, that you will comfort the family as they mourn. We ask, O oh Lord God, that all things that we do, it will be done according to your purpose and according to your will. That there will be no unforeseen dangers and that the enemy himself will be kept at bay. And that, Lord Jesus, that we will have a grand time in your presence, even as we celebrate, even through mourning. So, Lord, accept our worship, our praise, our thanksgiving as we offer it unto thee, saying thanks, in Jesus' holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. For a short time, you will see me here. Our moderator will be our Deacon Warren Cunningham, and my name is Deacon Andrew Ferron. We will be your moderators, we will be your officiating ministers today. And so we will lead you into this worship session. We're going to stand, we're going to sing the opening hymn, How Great Thou Art, How Great Thou Art.
may take your seats and now hand over to Deacon Cunningham. Good morning. Welcome to Portmore Gospel Assembly. Even though the occasion is not a bright one, we are happy to have you. Our condolences to the family, friends, and well-wishers of Fitz Albert Anderson. Our first lesson this morning will be taken from Psalm 91, and it will be read by Fitz Anderson, the son. You will use this. You can use our overhead. Hello? You can use the overhead. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the pe perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His, tr his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give you his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways, and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm 91. This is the word of God. Thank you so much, Fitz and um, friend. Wonderful. Um, can you stand with me, please, and let us sing this wonderful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
may be seated. Comes to mind that a wonderful hymn like this should not be sung behind mass, but such is the time. Eh? Our second lesson this morning will be taken from Ecclesiastic 3, 1 to 8, and this will be read by Jacqueline Anderson, um, his daughter. While she comes, I am made to understand that we are also streaming live. I would want to welcome those who are online and thank you for supporting the family. The second reading is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. A time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity on the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. We know it's not easy. We have two tributes coming up. Our first tribute will be done by Evelyn Anderson, daughter, and the second, Antonia Wilson, granddaughter. Good morning, everyone. I'll be doing this song not that I'm going to hear it for the last time or I'm going to sing it for the last time, but I think I'll never hear it from my dad anymore. When I come to the river at ending of day and the last way of sorrow had blown There'll be somebody waiting to show me he won't have to cross Jordan alone. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. In Jesus died all my sins to atone. When the darkness I see, he'll be waiting for it. He won't have to cross Jordan alone. Often times is forsaken and weary and sad. And it seems that the friends are all gone. But the boy, there's someone to cheer him and to make his heart glad. He won't have to cross Jordan alone. He won't have to cross Jordan alone. For Jesus died all the sins to atone. When the darkness I see, He'll be waiting for me. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Church, often times we are forsaken. And weary and sad When it seems that our friends are all gone But there's someone to cheer us And make our hearts glad So we don't have to cross Jordan alone Say that we we'll have to cross Jordan alone for Jesus died all his sins to at 
for when the darkness is seen, Christ is waiting for him. Oh, we won't have to cross Jordan alone. Thank you. God bless you, Jesus. May his soul rest in peace. Special granddad, the day you left and gained your wings, my heart broke in two. I wish you could have stayed with me, but heaven needed you. Throughout the years, you have been a wonderful granddad to me. As I grew older, you were there I only had to call. I knew that one day, I knew that I could count on you. You will never let me fall. You are a very special person with kindness in your heart. And the love we had together grew stronger now, we're apart. I know I can't bring you back, although I wish it every day. But a piece of me went with you the day you went away. But my granddad, in a million, you will forever live in my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn and Antonia. Our remembrance will be done by Sherine Carr Grant, daughter, followed by a selection from the Jamaica Customs Agency Choir, Sherine Carr Grant. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I know Luke or Mr. Anderson would want us to be happy and he would want us to say a resounding praise be to God. In a small district called Mount Friendship St. Andrew lived a little girl about age three, six years old. She was an only child and lived with her grandparents who she loved dearly. She she would often wonder why the children of father, who they call daddy or dad. This troubled her sometimes, but to God be the glory, her mother relocated to Kingston and met a man who she, event who she was eventually introduced to as Mr. Anderson. At that tender age, she remembered the instant connection she felt for this short, dark, and handsome man. Immediately without asking mom or Mr. Anderson's permission, she started to call him daddy. She was so excited to have a dad that she called him daddy every second of the day. But the, being the man he was, he answered every time with a smile. She met members of the family when she visited for holidays, but not everyone eventually but not everyone. Eventually, she relocated to Portmore St. Catherine with her mom and her newfound daddy. She was so elated when she found out that she had uncles, aunties, not to mention stepbrothers and sisters. She was on, the top, of, she was on top of the world, but daddy made sure she knew the importance of family and told her that time with family was priceless so being this little frightened Friday country girl, she decided on her own without discussion that she had sisters and brothers, not stepsisters and stepbrothers. Her daddy ensured that they all knew about God. Every night they had to take turns reading the Bible for daddy, which he totally enjoyed and they better not be in a hurry to read it either because he had to savor every word. Her daddy would tell them stories about his childhood and how rough it was, but he emphasized that failure or quitting should never be their option. Well, this little country girl 
loved her daddy unconditionally. He was her mentor. He was the barrier between her mom and the beating she missed when she was said to be rude. But then he would say to her, next time listen to your mother. She was so happy he was her daddy. Some of you might be wondering who this blessed little girl is. That little girl is me. Daddy was a provider, not only for us, but also for other families. He knew and he helped them. He always taught us to, satisfy, to be satisfied with what we had and to also help others with the little that we had. We were also uh, encouraged to do well in school and excel in whatever we did because, of special, because he was that special daddy. Uh, this was the advice not only for us, but to all the children that he knew. We were never hungry because if it was even to make his favorite one-pot meal, which he would boast about how good it was, Daddy was an excellent roofing specialist, but not a good cook. But guess what? Because he taught us to satisfy with the little we have, we ate it like it was a gourmet meal. Daddy was a man of principle who did his job as a qualified roofing specialist with the highest level of integrity. His work spoke for him. I think I emulated that from him. Daddy was a man of God who ensured that every conversation he had with the young or old, God was always the main topic. Daddy loved to sing, and my brother Gio and I would have a good laugh because when he forgot the line to a song, he would replace it with these two words, my Jesus. Every song would have those words in it. Gio also recalled Daddy asking us to get some water, even when he was standing beside the fridge. Daddy was a great character, and many can attest to that, right? He was a proud, short man who walked with his head high. Since the passing of Daddy, my siblings and I were exchanging stories, and these were some of the fun memories they had. Do you remember one day, Mommy wasn't feeling well, and Daddy had to rub her back? When he rubbed her back, she said she didn't even feel better because Daddy was rubbing her back like he was splashing the tar on the roof. He said he nearly died of laughter. Also, he has not mastered the roofing like his father as yet, because Daddy would use his fingers to knock the roof and find every leaf on it. It was so amazing working with him. Wayne, which is fit, stated that he would introduce him as my boy, Boru. On his vacations in Canada, he had to watch, all the family members had to watch Jesse Dixon, his favorite gospel singer, seven days a week, all day until he went to bed. Wayne misses hearing Jesse's music when he left. Errol, who is not here, said his father was the only one that had the whole scheme. Anywhere he went, he had to come back before daddy goes to bed. So him and Wayne Fitzborough started to go out after he went to bed and leave the door open so they can get in. Leave the door open so they could get in when they returned. Upon their return one night, the door was locked. So they woke up their baby brother, Gio, to open the door. All of a sudden, guess who appeared? Daddy. Daddy said to Gio, if you open it up tonight, you and them are gonna steal them. We just knew that when they went, they just knew that when they went out, they would return at 6 a.m. because the door would not be open before that. Dennis, 
my older brother, said, as a child, he shared with, with dad um, a bed, right? He shared a bed with dad. And you know, children love to move around. But every move that Dennis made, daddy would slap him and say, stay steady. So even now, as an adult, Dennis sleeps and stays still. You would think that Dennis and daddy were twins because every pants length he bought, Dennis got one too. And, he wore the and they wore it at the same time. They had one pair of dressing shoes, which Dennis wore to, to school and daddy wore on weekends to meet the clients for work. I am super, super elated that daddy became a part of my life when he did. The values and morals he instilled in all of us is very evident in who we are today. So we salute you, daddy. You did exceptionally well. Sleep in peace, daddy. Come 
coming for to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. I do coming for to carry me home. Tell all my friends I'm coming to coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me. Coming for to carry me, for to carry me, coming for to carry me. Oh. Marvelous. Give them another round of applause. Man. I certainly hope it's not a choir just for funeral that you go around and minister in other churches because that was wonderful. Amen? All right. Our offering to him this morning is the Lord's my shepherd. And um, this will be done in aid of the um, church building fund. We ask our ushers to come for, forward as we sing the Lord's my shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. He lives, he lives, he lives. I know that my Redeemer, yes.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks, Lord, that you were able to allow us to give unto your kingdom. We pray that those who will be using it will be using it wisely. And we give you thanks for your continued strength unto us that we go out to labor. Thank you then, Lord, for this moment, we pray in Jesus' name. You may be seated. We have at this time two tributes coming up. Our first tribute will be from Giovanni Anderson, the son. And then he will be followed by Gabriel Whitaker, goddaughter. Once again, the sons have, have substituted. So we would ask the substitutes to give us your name and your relation. Thank you. My name is Lorna Thomas Black, and I am Jill's second mother. So he, I feel happy that he has asked me to read this on his behalf. Remembrance from Giovanni Anderson. Good day. Thank you for being here to celebrate the life of my father. This is a tribute to my father. So I have decided to speak of the good times we had. I would like to share some of the moments I enjoyed with my father. While growing up, I saw him working to take care of my mother and his siblings. I remember my father would bring snacks for me every day when he got home from work. But one particular day, he didn't bring any. So I turned to him and said, Daddy, you know me hungry bad, bad, bad. He had to go next door to Miss Chin Shop to get a snack for me. I remember when we used to go to the country, a place called Reynolds. Easter time we would go to hand out bun and cheese and for Christmas he would hand out brown envelopes to the elders in the community. When we went to Reynolds everyone knew Lukey and his workmen were there and every house we stopped at we had to eat. Mr. Pasley and Bennett can testify to that. The following year, Mumi asked me if I was going. I told her no. She asked me why. I said because every old lady wanted to kiss me on my jaw because I was Lukey's son. Daddy wasn't a person who kept a lot of friends, but I would see him with Mr. Ken, Mr. Ritchie, Mr. Frey, and Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris was our chef when Mummy went to visit her mother and left us with our father. And he said that some of the meals had all different types of peas. Red peas, split peas, gongo peas, and so on. But it tasted very well. Yet, when he went on the road, Dad would point to someone and say, that is my friend. I guess everyone was his friend. These men were the ones I could turn to when things were not going right with me and my father. Thank you, Mr. Frey, Mr. Ken, and Mr. Ritchie for having a listening ear and thank you for being a true friend to my father. Daddy could tell you every part of the 14 parishes because of his work. He told me many stories. One day, I remember we were going to measure a roof. Daddy caught me looking at a girl. Daddy said, nah man, fear for two maga. I asked him, how do you approach a girl? He said, what do you mean? Because your stammer, I replied. How do you talk to them? He said, the same way you talk to them. I slow down and talk to them. The first time I walked past daddy with a girl was because mummy wasn't there. I took the chance with him. I introduced the girl and walked past and went into my room. While in my room watching TV, I heard the door knock. It was daddy. I went outside to him and he said, Oh, you have to invite the girl in at the house. And I have no, I no food no there. He gave me money and I went to KFC. Daddy was a real ladies man. This man was full of style. I admire him in his suits when he would, go, when he would be going on the road. He was a sweet boy. Daddy was a sample man. He would open and close the fridge and then call you to bring him a glass of water. Marsha, you know that. 
I can remember the first job I went on and everything I did, I did wrong because I was not doing it his way. He was a perfectionist. No matter the job, big or small, he gave 100% of his time, even if the customer did not even have enough money. He would say, don't worry, no problem, your roof is going to be fixed. Daddy was my hero. He was a king that did not wear a crown. But one thing, he was a roofing superhero. He was a man of God. He would say, walk the straight and narrow road. He would teach us to always have manners to people. I can remember one morning he woke up and, and had a vision that a bright light was over Bayside Hill with a man in a white suit saying, I am coming soon. He said God was talking to him. The next day, he went and got a cross built. He would carry it on his shoulders saying he was carrying Jesus' struggles with him. He really loved his Savior. And I witnessed him carrying the cross and he was crying as well. So it really meant something to him. When you would sit on the veranda with him, he would preach to you. And by the time you left, you felt like you were a Christian. And when he was done preaching, he would shout, talk to me. My good friend Michael told me that your father was a special person. He never showed him Michael bad face. He was someone he looked to as a dad because he was a stand-up man. Always a joy to be in his presence. A strong man who never once crumbled. Many of my friends had the same thoughts about my father. There are a few other people I would like to say thank you to. Sidoni, Mr. Frey, Mr. Parsley, Bassey, Mr. T, Jerome, and Wayne. Thank you for being there for my father when he was sick, when I was not there. Marsha, thank you for being the beam of light. I do not know how you do it, but you are touched by God. Daddy, thank you for being the father you were to me. Thank you for being hard on me because it made me the man I am today. I will always miss your smile and laugh. And you would say, let my peace be with you. Miss you, Jill. Sleep in peace, Mr. Andy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, Gabrielle comes. But I just want to say a special thank you to those who have contributed before. Because I realize how special a man Mr. Anderson was. Luke, as you call him. And everybody is saying kind words that essentially seems to be coming from the art. That is so wonderful and a special thank you to all. Go ahead, Gabby. Good morning, everyone. A tribute to Fitz Albert Anderson. Fitz Albert Anderson, a man who never hesitated to give a helping hand. Uncle Andy never failed to fulfill God's plan. But now a limb has fallen from the family tree and you can hear his voice saying, grieve not for me. Rather, remember the memories made, the laughter and the song, and the good life he lived when Uncle Andy was strong. His mind is at ease and his soul is now at rest. So let us lift up our chins and remember how much we were blessed. His life was well lived and now it is a legacy, a loving, lasting, forever memory. Hence, let us cherish the moments we had back then until the day comes when we see him again. Uncle Andy's life was a treasure to say the least. Therefore, my dear Godfather, rest in peace. Thank you so much, Gabriel. Um, I, I must point out that um, Gabby hasn't seen me before, but I have seen her many times on pictures. Gabby's mom is a friend of mine. We went to the greatest high school in Jamaica, and um, we, have, we, are, we are friends even to today. And the last thing that happened to me this morning before I came out of the house, my phone rang, and her mom was asking me directions to the church, not knowing that I would see her there. But I didn't tell her because I wanted to surprise her. Thank you so much, Gabby. God bless you. We have open tributes that we are allowing before the eulogy of three. Um, if you are led to come and give a tribute to Loki Fitzalbert Anderson, 
Then you come. Yes, I see one person coming. You come, introduce yourself, and go right ahead with your tribute. So we have two persons already of the three. Well, it's going to be a... We will allow the four that are standing right now. You come close. The first person will go. Um, just stay over this side for me. Just stay over this side. First person. Oh, that person is... Okay. You can stand over that side, please. Miss? Just stand at the front. Yes. A little distancing. Okay, go ahead. Introduce yourself. And Good morning, everyone. My name is June Smith. I'm a family friend. I am reading this tribute on behalf of Errol Anderson. My father, Fitz Anderson, otherwise known as Luke, was born October 2, 1937, died July 21st, 2020. I mention his birth and death to highlight a dash between 1932 to 2020. Linda Ellis, in her poem, stated that the dash represents all the time spent alive on Earth, that their loved ones know what that dash is worth. I will tell you the impact the dash has on my life. My mother died in 1976, so he became my mother and father. Most of my childhood memories with him is filled with humor, hardship, courage, and discipline. When he came home on weekends from the work site, he would tell us stories that happened on the site. They were humorous to me. 1976, when we moved to Passage Fort and started the addition, funds got low. We had to sleep without the doors. His courage to do that made me have no fear to sleep at nights. He taught me from, from a tender age that a man must not be in bed after 6 a.m unless he's statistically sick and, must work for what, and that you must work for what you want. Work is work. No work is too small. Upon his death, he was up before 6 a.m. He disciplined my eldest brother, Dennis, and it is still humorous to date. My brother, in his adol adolescent stage of life, came home and said that he's drawing in the Rastafarian doctrine. Daddy said, no problem. Guess what? He cooked pork every day for over a month. My brother did not join the Rastafarian doctrine. He joined the Christian faith and still a member today. When reminiscing, I would say he was rough with me, but I realized that his methods of discipline mold me in the man I am today. My siblings and I never had an encounter with the law. We work hard for our achievements and always on time for work. Absenteeism is not in our book. This is a part of his legacy in the dash he left behind. These traits embedded in his children, and I can see the traits in his grandkids also. Thank you, Dad. Sleep in peace. You will forever be in my heart. Either the findeth a wife, findeth a good woman. I say this to say that he that findeth a good neighbor, findeth a good neighbor. Mr. Anderson has been my neighbor for more than six years. And he has been a very, very, very good neighbor. Mr. Anderson was a man who loved children. He didn't only love his children, but he loved other people's children. He loved my, my children so much. Um, I can remember him sending my son to the shop to buy phone cards. Sometimes he would buy like five phone cards, and then he would have to sit and put on those phone cards for him. And then what he would do like at the end of the week or so, he would add up those rewards and, and say, come here, boy, come for something. See your ice cream money here. And so that's the type of person he was. And I want to say to the family today that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Oftentimes you wonder why tears come into your eyes and the burden seems to be 
much more than you can bear but my god is standing near he sees your falling tears tears are your language only god understands tears of a broken hearted soul he sees your tears and ease them when they fall God weeps alone man he'll take them by the end tears are your language only God understands when grief has left you long has not turned out the way that you have planned but my God he won't forget his promises he'll keep tears are your only God understands. God sees the tears of a broken hearted soul. He sees your tears and is them when they fall. alone with man he'll take them by the end tears are your language only God understands tears are your language only God My name is Albert Richards. I am the Richie that is mentioned. Andy is my very good friend. We've been friends for more than 40 years. Became friends because of my wife who is related to him. We have done a lot of things together including watching TV and singing together with Jesse Dixon. And he was always a God-fearing person. And he spoke about Christ all the time. He eventually, one day, went to a church and told him that he needed to be baptized and was baptized. And they, God bless you. Sleep in peace.
pleasant good morning everyone I'm a very shy person but I have to come up here today because daddy I don't call him Mr. Anders I call him daddy I will look forward every morning when I'm going to work to say good morning daddy and when I came back in the evening 12 of us will sit down on the chair outside and we will talk about God and he will encourage me what to do and stuff to walk right with God you know he always says that um, about his mother always singing you know that is good I meet Marsha I call her my sister even though we are not blood she's my sister she treat me so wonderfully and because of this man who has grown her to be such a wonderful long lady I am proud to say, today I'm going to sing a song, but I'm very shy, but I'm going to do it anyway. Life has been so good, I can't complain. When I ask, Lord, give me strength to rise again. Amen. One of the things that when you go to a funeral and you are there sitting in the audience or you're on the podium, you listen to the things that the people has to say about the individual that is going to be buried. And there are lots of people that can come and say, different things, some that are funny, some that are sad, some that are loving, some that are caring, and gives a portrayal of the person. But none will sound sweeter like heaven than when you hear the people say, this man is a man of God. He tells you things about God, and he encourages you in Jesus' name. That is the most blessed thing that one can sit in any audience and hear. And I know that the family must be proud. Must be proud listening to all the tributes. And we give God thanks. We give God thanks. Amen? Come on, praise the Lord. Yes. Yes, that is what it must be. And we are, we are happy when things like these occur. I, I, I sat and I take note for the men in the family. You see what they did? 
Men are smarter than really people give them credit for, you know. Look at the nice person them, the man them get to replace them, to do a thing for them. Evil fits. He didn't say a thing, but he came. But look who stood beside him. Some nice lady, strong lady. And in life, relationship is about reliability. That's why I'm going to big up Mr. Richie. Because he was there during life and during death. He's there. But the men in the family, the sons, smart move, man. Get some reliable, strong, nice lady to come and represent you. Give God thanks. At this time, we will have the eulogy that will be done by David Whitaker. The next voice you, hear, you will hear will be the sermon that will be done by our deacon, Andrew Ferran. But we want you to take note of the eulogy by David Whitaker. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I greet you in the name of the loving Father. Mike. Justin. While we work on the mic, oh, we have the mic. I want to express my sincere condolences to the family of my dear friend, Mr. Fitzalbert Anderson, and to encourage you that as you mourn and as you weep, you weep not for a soul that has been lost or for a soul that has found rest. So I encourage you to hold to your faith as he would have wanted you to and be blessed. So teach us the number of days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servant. Satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Psalms 90, 12 to 14. Luki, Sir Andy, Mas Andy, Papa, Grandpa, Mr. Anderson. Fitz Albert Anderson was born on October 2, 1937 to Martha Thompson and David Anderson in the cool hills of Reynolds District, Point Hill, right here in the beautiful parish of St. Catherine. He grew up with both parents and attended the Point Hill All Age School, which is now known as the Point Hill Junior High School. One of nine siblings, Lukey, as he was affectionately called, had his five sisters, Pamela, Jem, Sonia, Clarice, and Veronica. And three brothers were Donovan, Barrington, and Stanford. Mr. Anderson had 10 children, beautiful children. Six daughters, Evelyn, Anne-Marie, Sandra, Donna, Jacqueline, and Shireen. Four sons, Dennis, Errol, Fitzalbert II, and Giovanni, the Washbelly. 24 grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren. At the age of 18, Mr. Anderson decided that it was time for him to leave his parents' home in Reynolds District for the unknown in the great big city of Kingston. He had to find something to do, a skill, a trade, something. He was no longer comfortable being taken care of by his parents. He was now becoming a man. He never really settled in Kingston and shortly thereafter moved to Foster Lane and Anderson Road in Portmore, St. Catherine. While there, he sought employment at Trinidad Mastic and subsequently at St. Catherine Roofing Specialist. It was there that he honed his skills as a roof technician, a skill which would later make him renowned. On June 14, 2000, Mr. Anderson married his life partner, Barbara Elizabeth Carr Anderson, who predeceased him in 2017. Mr. Anderson became an astute roofing specialist, and the precision of his skill and craft made him renowned all across the island of Jamaica. Oh no, 
his roofing skills were not just confined to the houses in Portmore, St. Catherine, as much as we would want to believe they were. Far from as far as east in Moran Point to as far west as Negril Point, Mr. Anderson had worked on a roof, from residential roofs to commercial roof, from Miss Grace's little one-bedroom roof to the roof of Jamaica House and King's House. If it leaked, Mr. Anderson could fix it, and fix it, he did. He didn't need to advertise. The quality of his work sold itself, and the referrals just kept coming in, even from the USA, Canada, and as far as UK. Once Mr. Anderson fixes your roof, it remains fixed for life, even for some of the most difficult slab roofs that you'd find in Portmore. He could fix it. Not only would you receive a warranty for the job done, but if the funds were limited to cover the job that he was working on, he would design a payment plan right there on the spot that fit and suited your need. True to form, the hurricane season of each year was Mr. Anderson's busiest period of the year. Worse if the threat of a storm was imminent. We always wondered how we managed to please all his customers and made sure their roofing needs were fixed prior to the heavy rain season. Worse yet, if a storm was coming, he and his team of workers always get it done, safety and on time, all the time. Mr. Anderson loved God and always finds time in his busy schedule to visit church at Kingston at Fellowship Tabernacle. He loved to worship, wasn't quite sure what the words were sometimes, but trust me, he never stopped singing. It never stopped there. You should see him dance as well. Oh, he was a dancer. When those gospel music touched him, his carport at home or the pew at church could not hold him. Give me pass, make me praise me God. Him too good to me. He always tells of his altar at home, his inner sanctuary, where he would pull away from the busy routines of his life to have his personal and special moment with the Lord. Those moments were always fulfilling for him. Only the experience of Moses could outdo these moments Mr. Anderson had in his inner sanctuary. All the visions he would share of his encounter with God. And yes, I remember that one on the Bayside Hill as well with that white gentleman standing on the hill and how he carried the cross. Oh, he shared that with us all. He was not afraid to share these with the young and with the old. It was those experiences he developed that he developed his love for counseling and spent time with the young men and women in his community, a passion and a drive he continued until his last day. Mr. Anderson was a philanthropist. He loved to give and expected nothing in return. He loved the elderly, the young and the vulnerable. Countless times we could recall him asking us groceries and back to school supplies to make packages for these individuals. For their sacrifice, he was well loved, not only in his community, but far and wide as well. He believed firmly in the act of giving to God and expected his blessings in return. It was this philosophy which strengthened his faith in God. He never always saw his pay bill on a weekend, but know this. At the appointed time, all his workers were paid and left comfortable. Mr. Anderson loved to travel and his Canadian visa was such a blessing to him. Oh, the many trips he made and the wonderful time he spent with his family. The food, the shopping, the road trip, the Jesse Dixon, yes, I heard of that too. The friends and the countless unions he would have had. We could not wait for him to return here in Jamaica to hear all the stories of his encounters. He was always so very happy and so fulfilled upon his return. On Wednesday, June 23, Mr. Anderson was admitted to Medical Associate Hospital after falling ill. He was treated and sent home. He never really returned to work thereafter, and we realized things were not the same for him. We became concerned, but could not show him that we were concerned. On the evening of July 15, after having a conversation with his daughter, Shireen, she became even more concerned as to what was wrong with Daddy. 
took him for a visit to his family doctor. The concerns were shared with the family doctor, who then referred him to a consultant. Sometime later, he was referred to the Kingston Public Hospital, where he was admitted. While there at KPH, <clears throat> although he was in pain, he kept on asking for his children, all his children. He would reminisce of the good old times. He would spend a lot of time while being at KPH in worship sessions and without a doubt started some prayer meetings with the nurses and patients who were able to join in. His hospital bed became his inner sanctuary. Even on his sick bed, he was still praising his God. This continued for a few days, even while he was in pain. Then on the morning of Tuesday, July 21, Mr. Anderson developed further complication and made a peaceful transition to be with his Lord and Savior. By his children, his brothers, sisters, grand and great-grandchildren, niece, nephew, countless relatives and close friends. Only for a moment you stayed, but what an imprint your footprint have left on our hearts. The journey does not end here. Death is just another path, one that we all must take. So, O oh death, where is thy sting? O oh grave, where is your victory? So sleep well, Luki, Sir Andy, Papa, Ma Sandy, Grandpa, Mr. Anderson. Until we meet again, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. Until such time, Sir Andy, what good? I'm going to fix some rules on the other side till we meet again. That's it. Thank you for that eulogy and indeed it would cause us to remember some of the things that Mr. Anderson was to you, the family members. I want us to stand and to sing this little chorus. My home is in heaven just waiting for me. This is my little wake up song, yeah? It's my wake up song. My home is in heaven just waiting for me, and when I reach there, how happy I'll be. My home is in heaven just waiting for me, and when I reach there, how happy I'll be. My home is in heaven, no rent to pay. My Jesus paid it, paid it all for me one more time. My home is in heaven, just waiting for me. Come on, man, let me hear you sing it. How happy I'll be. My home is in heaven, no rent to pay. My Jesus paid it, paid it all for me. Amen. Thank you very much. You may take your seats. For the short time that we will be looking into the Word of God, I want to bring your attention to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, and we will be reading from verse 19 through to verse 31. The question is asked, what happens after we die? What happens after we die? And the Lord Jesus Christ, he, 
he took the time to paint us a little picture of what can happen after we die. And so we read in Luke chapter 16, verse 19, it says that there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores. And longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things? But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered then, I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house. 28, stuck. For I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Surely the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his holy, precious word. Amen. You and I, we were born to die. And that's a bold statement to make. You and I were born to die. We try to distract ourselves from the fact that of that, but it is the truth. From the moment you draw your first breath, you are destined to die. At some point, we all wonder what death will be like. What will happen after I die? And if you ask 10 different people, you will get 10 different responses. Please don't ask a Jamaican. Don't ask a Jamaican. Because you can guarantee the response is going to be colorful. So isn't there someone, anyone, who can cut through the chase and just give us a glimpse, tell us what will happen after we die? The answer is yes. A bold yes. That person is Jesus Christ. And if anybody knows about death, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if it is anybody who knows about life after death, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning, the text points us to a factual account of what two men experienced 
seconds after death. But in particular this morning, I want us to zoom in on the rich man. We're going to look at this rich man and we're going to gain some truths. We're going to seconds after death. Seconds after death. And the first point that I want to bring across is that seconds after death, the accomplishments of life will become irrelevant. The accomplishments that you have gained in this life, it will become irrelevant. Verses 19 to 22 tells that this man was the pimp of his day. He wore purple every day. He dressed in the finest designer clothes. And for those who know, purple was a sign of royalty. It is a sign of royalty. And so this man, he dressed good. He wanted to look good. I don't know if he looked better than Mr. Anderson, but he looked good. He had only the finest delicacies that was available during his time. Bible tells us that he feared sumptuously every day. And of course, what would it be like if he did not live in a mansion? A great big house with servants attending unto him to make sure that everything that he wants was always at his fingertip. So this was the man, a rich man, a man who lived lavishly, a man who had everything to his comfort. This guy, he made it to the top of the social class. He made it to the top of the financial class. He was the who's who of the day. He was the all-important man around him, around that time. He was living the lifestyle we all dream about. No doubt, he must have had the ladies around as well. He had it all. Money, possessions, fame, and power. He was a man of status. But if you were paying attention, you would have realized in the text that it says, seconds after he died, all his accomplishments and all his possessions became totally irrelevant. He could not bring it with him where he was going. He had majored on the physical and neglected the spiritual. The things of this world will pass away when we die. We can't bring nothing with us. We cannot take the money with us. We cannot take the lovely ladies with us. We cannot take the fame with us. It will all be left behind. So he majored on the physical and neglected the spiritual. Only to find out that after death, the spiritual is the only thing that matters. So we read in the Bible, it says, what does it profit? To gain the whole world, yet lose your soul. He couldn't use his wealth as a bargaining chip to get even a touch of water on his tongue. Bill Gates. Bill Gates is one of the richest men in the world. One of those men who is most recognized in America and in the world. And so one day he gave several million dollars to a benevolent cause, creating quite a media stir. A very good act. So much so that an interviewer asked him, in light of these millions of dollars that he has given, 
The interviewer asked him if he attended church. Gates' reply was, of course not. I have more important things to do with my time. Seconds after death, may I tell you, if he does not repent, Bill Gates will discover that all the time that he has spent in gaining the things of this world will become irrelevant. It will become nothing when he cross over Jordan. So brothers, sisters, friends, when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, God is not going to ask about the pretty car or cars. <laughs> He's not going to ask about the big house on the hill. He's definitely not going to ask you about the bank account because the cattle on a thousand hills is his. He's not moved by your little wish wash money. He is not going to ask you about your accomplishments. The ladder, the social ladder that you've climbed, he ain't going to ask you about that. He ain't going to ask you how famous you were. The question God is going to ask you is this. What did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? What did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? Did you ignore his gift of salvation? Or did you accept his gift of salvation? So I implore upon you, friends, ensure that when you leave this earth, you leave this earth wealthy. Wealthy in the spiritual things, not in the physical things. Because the physical things one day will all burn up. One day will all pass away. The accomplishments of life become irrelevant seconds after death. James 4.14 it says, You do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are just a vapor. A vapor that appears for a little while and then poof, vanishes away. Here today, gone tomorrow. And what you have, you cannot carry with you. So seconds after death, your life and all that you have accomplished, your accomplishments will become irrelevant. But seconds after death, an eternity with or without Christ has already begun. Eternity has already begun seconds after death. In verses 23 to 26, we see that seconds after death, the rich man began serving a sentence that would last forever, for all eternity. We read that Lazarus was carried away in the bosom of Abraham. And we read that the rich man, he was buried. Just buried. There's nothing to it. He died. He buried. But then he woke up in a Christless eternity. Did you notice that the text says that there is a great gift gulf fixed? A great gulf fixed a chasm it is not something that you could just leap from one end to the other end it was great expansive and it was fixed so that those on one side could not pass over to the other side those that were found in the bosom of Abraham could not pass over to help somebody that was found, this gulf was fixed. 
the possessions, the fame, the glory, the 20,000 friends that you have on Facebook or Instagram or any other social site that you are a part of, they will not be able to span this gulf. Wherever you are today, I ask of you, set it right from now. Make it right today. Because when you leave this earth, there won't be a second chance to do so. Once you are in hell, you are never getting out. Never getting out. One songwriter says, Eternity, eternity, where will you spend eternity? So seconds after death, we see that this man was ushered into eternity. What might be the living conditions of this place called hell? And I have termed it God's maximum security prison. What might be the conditions there? When you get there, what are you going to do? You're going to be playing dominoes with your friends? You're going to be sitting down and on social media all day long? Will you be cooking up a storm for those who love to cook? Those who love to dance, hey, will there be music there? It's a job foot. Three times in these four verses, 23 to 26, we read that the condition was a state of torment. Torment. To agonize excessively. To be in agony day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute. No ease, no let, no stopping. It just continues and continues and continues. Eternity. Hell is a place of torment. It is not a good place, my friends. It's intense torment forever. Evangelism becomes important. We read verse 27, 28. He says, He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Seconds after death, this rich man became intensely interested in the salvation of those he loved. Suddenly, there was nothing more important than getting a word to his family and his friends to say, hey, don't come to this place of torment. It not turn good. What are you doing with the word of God that you hear time and time again? Are you ignoring God's word? Or are you making good on the word of God? Are you accepting his word? My friends, salvation is not provided for the afterlife. After you pass that great gulf, salvation is no more provided. Hebrews 3.15 it says, Today voice and opens the door, then I will come in to him. I will dine with him and he with me. Revelation 3 verse 20. Salvation is no, not tomorrow. Seconds after death, according to the passage, keeping your loved ones from dying without Jesus will be the most important thing. 
you will not be able to do anything about it. You can pray like Paul, preach like Paul, or pray like all those Old Testament saints. But no matter what you do after you've passed, you've passed. It is now up to those who are left behind to hear the word for themselves and to make that decision for themselves. So this rich man says, do, me I beg you, please send Lazarus to my brothers. Abraham said, no, mm -mm, that can't happen. So he said, hey, hey, ask Moses then and the prophets. Moses and the prophets are dead. Likewise, they can't help. And Abraham says, besides all of this, who is going to believe a dead man? Who is going to believe a dead man? If they don't believe the one that is living and standing in front of them, who is going to believe a dead man? My friends, it is imperative that we understand that seconds after death, our accomplishments will become irrelevant. Seconds after death, eternity with or without Christ begins. Seconds after death, there will be a desire to help, but you won't be able to help. Can I ask you a question this morning, this afternoon? Can I just share something with you? Can I share one little thing with you? If you don't hear anything else at all that I've said, I want you to hear this. Listen to this. Salvation is a free gift. It is a free gift. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the free gift of God, is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if you want to live eternally, with Christ, you need to accept this free gift of salvation. But not only that, salvation is not earned, and neither do you deserve it. For it is by grace you are saved through faith, that not of works, not of yourselves. It is the gift, the free gift of God. So no matter how much possession you have, you can't buy salvation. No matter how famous you are, you will never earn salvation. The only way to get salvation is to accept the free gift that the Lord Jesus Christ offers to you. That free gift is himself because only Jesus alone can save There's one more thing. You see, from the day we were born, I tell you that we are destined to die. And so you deserve eternal death. You can't buy your way into heaven with good works. You can't earn your way into heaven with the possessions that you've had. Because you deserve to die. And why do you deserve to die? Because the day that we were born, we were born as sinners. And as sinners, we cannot please the Lord. But it is he who gives us himself. It is he who can save us. And so we say, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is our salvation. A drowning man cannot save himself. He needs a savior. You and I as sinners, we cannot save ourselves. We need Jesus Christ as our savior. 
Jesus Christ came. He died on the cross in your place to pay the penalty for your sins. He hung on that cross that day because of your sins. He suffered because of your sins. But thanks be to God, he also rose from the dead so that you can be saved. So that you don't have to die eternally. You don't have to be separated from him forever and ever. He rose again, made the way for us so that we can be in his presence forever and forever. Eternity, eternity. Where do you want to spend eternity? He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. So my friends, I say to us today, don't wait. You may not get another chance like this. Don't put off what you can do today for tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Don't wait. You might miss God's best. He says that I am come that they may have life. And that they may have life abundantly. Abundant life. Don't miss out on that, my friends. Don't wait. You just might be fooling yourself. When you think you can fool the pastor. And when you think you can fool your family and your friends. You ain't going to fool God. There's no fool in him. Because he knows us inside out. He is the one who formed us. And so he knows us more than we even know ourselves. So don't boast about tomorrow. You do not know what a day may bring. I urge you, my friends, take heed. Take heed to God's word. It may be the last time that you will hear it. And then eternity steps in what will you do when you cross over jordan today i wonder if there is anyone who is seated under the sound of my voice who has a desire to make jesus their own there's anyone here who understands that Seconds after death, no matter what you have, you cannot bring it with you. Is there anyone this afternoon who understands that an eternity without Christ is nothing but torment? I wonder if there is one today who understands that seconds after death, there is no salvation offered. My friends, if you want to make that choice today, I urge you, don't leave without talking to myself, Deacon Warren, or even one of our ushers. I beg of you to make that choice today. And if you are bold enough, I ask you, to hold up your hand and say, I want to make Jesus Christ my own today. I want him to come into my life and to separate myself from sin and to be bound for heaven. We did not talk about Lazarus, but Lazarus, he was in the bosom of Abraham where there is peace peace all day long you too can be in the bosom of abraham in the bosom of jesus christ and be at peace 
all day long. So is there one person today who is willing to say, I want to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want him to come into my heart today. Anybody like that this afternoon? We will not prolong, but I pray that you will make the right choice before time changes into eternity. For his name's sake. Amen. 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 Ah, uh, there you are. Marvelous message, Deacon Andrew. One that is relevant in view of the person who you have come to show your support for the family for because of the way he lived and how he demonstrated the importance that you cannot wait until seconds after that. Amen? At this time, I will be doing a prayer for the family. Can I ask the family members to stand, please? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this day. We know, Father, that it is not one of the best days in the lives of this family. But you, are God, are the great comforter. You are the father that will comfort them in these times and all the questions that they will ever ask, that you, oh God, will be the one there to protect them, to guide them through, and to give them the answers. Lord, we know it's not easy, but we pray for their strength at this time. We pray, Lord God, that the support that has been shown and that will come Oh, Heavenly Father, will, will be so great that their, their, their minds will be set at ease and they will be encouraged by the life that their loved one has lived. We pray for those who are online also, family members. Lord, we lift them before you. We know that it is even more difficult when you are unable to uh, make an attendance or to put in your presence to show support or to even hug your fellow loved ones. But oh Lord, we know the answers to all of these. And we pray, God, that the comforter will be able to touch each and every lives and to make them even better in life of the fact of the, the life that their loved one has lived. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're going to keep them, that you're going to protect them, that you're going to live, let them be joyful instead of mournful, that you make, make, make them glad instead of sad. Because you, O oh God, are the good God, the good Father that we worship. Thank you for them. Bless and keep them. Protect their household, we pray. Cover them under your blood. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our, our recessional hymn is, Mine eyes have seen the glory, but I will make some... I will make some announcements before we do so. I've been asked to announce that the repast will be held at the family house at 18 Park Circle West in Passage Fort. Please be reminded also that you will own, they will only allow 15 persons to enter onto the um, burial ground. Bear that in mind. Fifteen persons. Next thing, we will line up for those who are going to Medores on the left side of the road. We will take Augusta Drive to the stoplight where we cross over into Grange Lane and take the highway from there onto Medores. So we line up Earth on the outside, along with those who are going. Do we have a police escort? 
Yes, and we understand that we have a police escort, so that is wonderful. All right. Um, can you stand for our recessional limb, please? We ask the Paul Bearers to come. Okay, so after the Paul Bearers and, 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 and us leave, the ushers will direct you how to leave your seats in an orderly and protected fashion. So you will be guided by the directives of the usher. Paul Bearers, beautiful singers, let us go. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Stand up, can we just have the benediction? Known to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be praise, glory, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Singing. He is coming like the glory of the morning on the wave. He is wisdom to the mighty. He is conquer to the brave so the world shall be his footstep and the soil of time his slave oh god is marching on glory glory
Mic check. For it's in 